Hello again, welcome to the Academy. This is part of a video series on calculus 3 topics, and this time we'll be talking about the curl of the era. So earlier, I talked about the divergence of curl. And I mentioned the formal definition of curl. Was this. N dot curl of f is the limit as a goes to zero f dr the integral of that divided by a where a is some area n is a normal vector and this is C going counterclockwise. And A is the area of this region. And this is A gets smaller. That is the curl of F. F is something like this. So now, I want to show how this is sort of similar to the definition of derivative. The definition of derivative is limit as delta x goes to zero of delta f over delta x. You write it in shorthand form. And this is the derivative with respect to x. So intuitively, this is something divided by a as a goes to zero. So this could be similar to a derivative of sorts. And so we have n dot curl f so this is kind of like a derivative, not exactly this is not a formal proof. But this is sort of some intuitive, intuitive way to view the theorem. So we say this derivative with respect to a, then we can solve this differential equation by moving a to the other side, so curl f dot n dA equals d of this thing. Now to remove the d, you just take the integral, and then you just get this. It was the integral curl f, this is another way to write curl f, dot n dA, so we integrate it both sides. But really, this is a double integral because it's dA. Curl f dot n dA. And you can see this is really a surface integral where a is a surface. Equals Actually, it can be any surface, it doesn't have to be A, it could be a surface like this. So, the full form of the theorem is let me write over here is that the surface integral of the curl dot n ds or dot d vector s. this part. See now, if S is the surface here, C is still going to be this boundary of the surface. The boundary of a surface or of some region is often written like this. Like a partial S, just by itself, represents the boundary of S. 
going to write that here. So this is the full form of the kernel theorem. Now you can see this is turning a surface integral into a line integral. So again, I want to say that this is a generalization of the fundamental theorem of calculus, which basically takes an interval from A to B and says the integral of the derivative over this interval is really just f again. So the derivative of f becomes f, you drop the integral, and you just consider the endpoints b and a. And this is for a single variable, and this is a similar thing. Once again, you have a differential form here, just like the derivative, becomes f by itself, the integral is removed. In this case, there are two integrals, so one of them is removed. And instead of integrating over the whole surface, it simplifies to just the boundary of S. So you can have any surface here, and if it has the same boundary, it will have the same value of surface integral because they're both equal to this. And if they have the same boundary, well, this is just going to be the same curve C that you're integrating over. So I want to show an interesting result of this. Ask first, let me make a slight uh, clarification. The direction of a C of this curve is going to depend on the choice of normal vector n. So I have a surface, say a surface like this. If my normal vector n points out like that, then C will go counterclockwise like this based on the right hand rule. So if you point your finger in the direction of the path, and your middle finger towards the surface, towards the inside of the surface, then your thumb will give you the direction of the normal vectors. So in this case, you're going to see will be out. So the normal vectors are going to point out. And if they're pointed in, you could also use the same theorem, but then you have to change your direction. Or else that just switches with a negative sign. So if n becomes flipped, it becomes negative. So you have to change the direction of this integral to make it also negative. So that's the convention that's used here, the right-handed convention. And so I want to use now to show that the curl theorem can be used to prove Green's theorem. Green's theorem proof. So, we start with this statement right here. And let's just use, and let's say a surface is some region in the xy plane, a flat region, S. Just like in Green's theorem, you only use a flat region, R. And let's use a counterclockwise convention, which means that our normal vector will be pointing up, straight up. So that's just going to be k or 0, 0, 1. So we know from curl theory that the integral of a curl, the surface integral of a curl equals the line integral over the boundary of this surface, which is just the curve C. 
So if we have, if we use again F being L and M, or L and zero, it's the same thing. We can now calculate these sides. And then we have R, we know R is just X, Y, and DR is DX comma DY. And this becomes, well, this is integrating over the curve of, well, f dot dr is just l dx plus m dy. And this is, of course, the right side of Green's theorem as well. So now let's calculate this other side. So we want to find the curl of f. The curl. Curl, you know, the cross product of the del and f is going to be, calculate this cross product, this is just the partial with respect to x, y, and z of l, n, and this is 0. Well, i first gives you 0, j is a uh, L partial Z J and K is C partial M respect to X minus and C this would be how many I's are there? I would be this, so we partial M partial Z i plus j would be 0, and k would be partial l with respect to y. Or, well, the i component is negative partial m partial z. j is this partial l partial z, and k, which was k, is this minus this, partial m, partial x, minus partial l, respect to y. So that's the curl of f, if f is just l, m, 0. straight up, 0, 0, 1, ds, this equals, well this is the integral over s, well that part of this, with x is going to be 0, the y will also be 0, and so when you multiply these, you just get this times 1, so partial m with respect to x minus partial l with respect to y ds, equals L dx plus M dy. Of course, we know S is the flat region. Oh, we just call it S. It doesn't even have to be a surface integral because it's flat in the xy plane. So it's really just a double integral. dA is over C. And this is Green's theorem that we know. And the proof is complete. And so that's one of the interesting special cases of Green's of curl theorem is Green's theorem. And so as you see. 
The curl theorem is useful in simplifying many integrals, many surface integrals into the simple line integrals. And that's all for curl theorem. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.